Hello YouTube land, this is Brenton Son coming to you from Lexington, Kentucky, the Bluegrass State. Today we have another Bigfoot story. Uh, I've been talking to this guy a little bit um, this past week and he has some interesting stuff. Uh, he has a little bit more than we're going to put in this video, but we're going to kind of narrow down to some of the uh, main uh, encounters that this guy has had that are really riveting, kind of sitting on the edge of your seat kind of stories, uh, I thought, and uh, very, very interesting. And uh, then I'll add some more stuff to the end of this video um, to to give just a few stories that I have that uh, I've kind of saved up that I've been wanting to try to get to you all. But today we have someone, his name is Jim. We're going to go by Jim uh, for his job purposes. That's the name we're going to use. And uh, he's from, uh, th this stuff took place mainly in Indiana. So over time we've been collecting stories from all over the United States. And Indiana is just another place that people have had encounters and reported. And it's not a place typically one would think of for being squatchy or as they say on, on finding Bigfoot, but uh, but this this guy is a super cool guy. I, I really like him, and uh, and you I think you're going to enjoy this. So, uh, hello, Jim. How you doing? Oh, I'm okay, Brent. All right. I know it's been kind of a long day, man. I really appreciate you press, uh, pressing through and and uh, come to to tell these uh, encounters that you'd had. Uh, uh, the tent story was just amazing. And if you would, let's just start with uh, kind of giving the area, kind of explain the lakes and, and things like that so someone can get the idea of uh, the flora and fauna of the area and then just take us through your encounter you know, with all the detail that you want to give. Okay. Um, I was born and grew up mainly around northern Indiana in a, a small town it's called Syracuse, and Syracuse actually has access to quite a few lake areas and channels, and one of them being the largest natural lake in Indiana, which is Wallasee. So in that area, there's a lot of skiing, fishing. I know people go hunting every year, and I used to be out, I used to be out outdoors quite a bit. And I love to go fishing. I always fished. And uh, I was out there one summer. It was like the summer of 95. It's been quite a while back. But I lived and grew up around that area. I've seen almost everything you could see around there. But summer 95, it's kind of in between work and just want some time off to relax. It's nice weather. So I thought, well, you know, I know of a little spot just outside of town on the railroad tracks where Syracuse Lake actually crosses into uh, the channels that cross into Wallasee. And there's a railroad track there, and there's a bridge, a boat bridge, mm -hmm. and a railroad tracks on top, and there's a boat lane going to, uh, out to Wallace and into Syracuse Lake. That was a good fishing spot. And just on the, uh, uh, it would be east of that, on the east side, there's a good wooded area. And a kind of area that had a lot of woods and for foliage around there. You could just pitch a little tent in. I just kind of hung out there. I'd, I do a little fishing, go to town, just to enjoy the outdoors. So I was enjoying the outdoors that summer and spent about a week out of this location fishing and back and forth. I had a bicycle I run down the tracks with going to town, get rid of my trash at the park. And uh, I was just out there one night I got back about 10 o'clock at night to my uh, campsite, and I had a little fire going. I either have fish or a can of chunky soup, something like that. Call it a night, and I heat up my soup. It kind of got to be routine. 
So I heated up my soup and I just kind of thought, well, I'll try to crash out now. And I laid down my tent afterward and usually made sure my fire was close to out or whatever, but it was in a safe spot. I had it all set up pretty good. And uh, the first night, and I, I was just dozing off when I heard about probably about 200 yards back on the north side toward toward Syracuse Lake area. There's, there's nothing back here except just, just real thick woods, bushes, and the lake, the part of the lake, the Syracuse Lake side. And uh, I heard some thrashing kind of going on and cracking and, and some noises. And I just kind of thought, okay, that's, that's probably some buck or deer just roaming around back there somewhere, you know, a larger animal for sure. And then, uh, okay, didn't think much about it. I kind of heard it off at a distance. So I ended up passing out that night. And then uh, next night comes, I'm in town doing my thing, hanging out with my buddy. I had a buddy in town there. And uh, we'd go fishing and stuff like that, go mess around town. Well, it got to be about 10, 11 o'clock at night, the second night from the first time I heard a noise. So I go back to the campsite. I made my can of soup, had my little fire going, and uh, decided, well, I better turn in. Got in my tent, and I'm, you know, I got the basics kind of. I got a sleeping bag, and all this was my friend's gear. A little two man tent that popped up. Kind of took just, oh, about 20 foot, maybe, in that area from the railroad tracks, 10 foot. So, but it's off in the woods on the north side of the tracks. And, uh, I'm laying down to sleep and, and I'm, I'm just, getting ready to pass out and I start hearing this noise again, some kind of woods and cracking and thrashing about 200 yards out on the north side and a little bit to the east. So I'm, okay, what, what is this again? That's strange that this is happening twice now. And then by golly, I start hearing like real tree limbs and stuff snapping here and there. And I hear this, like on two legs, just slowly walking up. But what was kind of weird is it was coming up on my campsite kind of quickly, but I could hear it step by step, step, cracks, crunk, just cracking trees. I mean, like, and it was getting louder and I, I'm like, oh my goodness, what, what's going on here? This is kind of weird. I don't, Maybe it's a big buck coming up my way. But the more I listened to it, the more I could tell it was just practically on two legs. It was just walking like step, 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 step like that and just busting tree limbs and trees or who knows what. And it sounded like it was just crushing wood, snapping and popping and tearing up bushes out by the roots, who knows? It was just making all kinds of noise. And it's coming up to my tent, I'm realizing this, this night, it's coming up to my tent, whatever it is, it's coming right at me. And I'm, I'm just kind of sitting there real quiet, I'm trying not to breathe too loud, and this thing's coming up. And, and before I know it, it's, it's up right beside the tent. It's right on me by the tent, and, and there was this tree by the tent that I hung my uh, soup can bag. It was like a little Walmart sack, and I had my trash in there, and I'd take it in the next morning at the park just down the tracks uh, beat to the uh, west, and I'd drop off my trash because they had trash containers. So, Well, anyway, my bag of uh, soup cans and stuff was up there, and... This thing is up on me before I realize it. Just crap.
cracking and crushing and stepping. It sounded like it weighed really, really heavy. I mean, and solid and just massive. This thing just sounded like it was a thousand pounds to me. So I'm freaking out at this point because I hear it kind of right up by my tent and I hear it getting into my bag of soup cans with like a hand or a finger and moving the cans around and kind of check like I could tell it was just thinking to myself oh my gosh this thing's right beside me and I'm, I didn't know what to do I'm freaking out I'm thinking well, you know what, my fire is going, it was a dark night, by the way, the moon had not been out that night, it, it, it was just gone, it was like a full moon, then it was, was no moon, it was in between moon phases, no. so this thing has gone through my soup cans, and I, I'm thinking to myself, though, I didn't think about the moon or anything, I knew it was kind of dark out and all that, but I figured it would be stars and, and my campfire was still going over there. And so I thought, oh my gosh, you know, it's going to crush me in this tent. It, if it wants to, it can just push its hand down and put its foot down, whatever, and just take me out. And nobody will ever know it. And, and I'd be out there maybe found or maybe not. But I was convinced it was the last night of my life. And I was terrified, to be honest. I was just terrified, but then I had to keep my wits about me. And I realized, you know what, if I'm gonna go out, if I'm gonna get taken out of this world, I'm gonna see what, what that is. So with my dull little hatchet ax, I had, I, I, just got up the nerve and I thought I'm gonna see it before it takes me out I wanna see what this is that's the least I can do I guess I've lived my life so I unzipped the tent real quick and I hopped out with my little hatchet tucked up right up on my chest and I stood there and there was something right in front of me and I don't know what it was I'm looking all over it it's dark I mean dark my little campfire burned down to little coals and it's not throwing out any light at all there's no moon there was foliage and tree coverage and i it was dark night as it was but i couldn't even see the stars i don't think and this thing's right in front of me whatever it is and i'm starting to really kind of freak out now and i all i remember was standing there it seemed like a while and and I don't, I can't see this thing, I knew that, so I didn't have that advantage anymore. I couldn't see it, I, I couldn't tell, I knew it was in front of me, I could sense that, it was right in front of me. So I held my hatchet up against me with both my hands, I'm kind of got my right hand over the, the back of the, the, uh, the head of the axe. And I thought if something reaches out and grabs me, I'm just going to start chopping away at it. That's all I remember thinking if, if something was going to grab me. I just thought it was the end of my life here. And, uh, and I sure wish I knew there was no light whatsoever, but I hopped out there and now I'm thinking, well, this is it. We're going to either go down or go out with my boots on. And this thing just stood there for a while and about the time I was thinking if it grabs me and I'm going to start chopping away at it the next thing I knew about 8 to 10 foot away I hear, hear a step to the left of me which would have been to the uh, east it stepped back the way it came and it was about 8 to 10 foot away the first step and then it just started walking off by the same pace it walked up and it walked back the way it came, step, 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 and just crushing trees or, and everything else. It sounded like it was a bulldozer going through the woods, just busting stuff up. Yeah. So uh, it just walked all the way back to where it came from, about two yard, 200 yards back to the north and the east, and back to 
like the only thing back there was like swamp or water or a thick patch of woods. So I don't know where this thing came from, but I was scared. I was scared crazy, and I got in my tent after that, and I just got in my tent because I really didn't have anywhere to go. I couldn't go anywhere. I, was, I had no uh, no plans. I didn't have people that I could run to. So I got back in my tent. And I just kind of, I, ne I never slept the rest of that night. Mm -hmm. I, I would just stay awake until it got daylight, and I tried to get a few hours sleep. Yeah. Now, so now when this thing when this thing came up on you, for one, you no you noticed that it was step, 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 and it was closing distance way too fast for the amount of steps. Is that something that you noticed? Yes, yes, exactly, yeah. Okay. And then when it when it came up to the tent, you knew that it had walked up right beside your tent where you had that bag. Now now when you Yeah, got, I was up there on me before I could even really think. I was freaking out and that was there. Okay, now now when you got out, you did what did did you hear anything and or smell anything? When I got out Oh, yeah, I did. When I got out, I got a whiff of, like, a skunk at first. Like a, like a real skunk was in the vicinity type of thing. And uh, the next thing, I don't know if it was a skunk running out of the way or what. I didn't really smell it in front of me, like it was right there in my nose. But standing there, about the time I was thinking, I'm going to start... Chopping if something grabs me, I'm gonna chop it. I did did hear a uh, like a almost like a real girthy breath, and I can't even imitate it. It was like, and then crunch eight to ten foot over, started walking back the way it came. But what freaked me out is after the breath and I was about ready to my knees were wobbling and everything by then I was like that's pretty bad I, I can't even see now, now when you heard the breath when you heard the breath what yeah. dire what direction did it did it come from oh it, it was over my head I'm five foot six and it was oh my gosh about three feet probably over my head at least Okay, that that's what I was getting at. You so this thing it let out a it let out a breath like it's like <sighs> he, he, he basically like, a, uh, like like a, I can't even imitate it, but it was just massive. Oh, well, like a like a gr uh, almost a grunt like <sighs> like kind of thing. No more like a like a breath like a. <sighs> okay, I don't know how else to like imitate a, it. Kind of like a bull, a uh, bull would There's snort. Really like something from something massive. I know that yeah. the whole feeling I got was this thing was incredibly massive yeah. and solid. So, so when this thing gave out that breath, you knew that it was very, very tall from when the breath, how the breath yeah. was above you. Yeah. Okay. And then when it took one step. You knew it was right in front of you, really close, within a couple, two, three feet. But when it, I, I think I, I was probably, I think it was probably within a foot of it when I stepped out of the tent. Yeah. Because when I heard that breath, it was right in front of me. In, in above but you. But it was yeah. above me. Yeah. Okay. So when it takes one step. You, right. It was eight. It, it sounded to be eight feet away. Yeah, that's what shocked me too. Is all of a sudden I thought it was, I'm still looking in front of me. When I took that step, it was probably eight foot away from me. All of a sudden, when I heard it take its first step away, and I was just at the time I was thinking, "Oh my gosh, that had to be a big step." Yeah. Yeah. So. But. Also, I was thinking um, how thankful I was that maybe it's going to walk off. Right, yeah. So so what, what I'm kind of getting at is that your mind is going mostly by your the sound, a little bit by hearing, and a little bit by smell, that you're smelling right. this skunky kind of smell, 
you're also uh, hearing the sounds and um, and basically by a sound you were mostly going by and yeah I, I think yeah, this and I, I mean pure adrenaline right um, I just figured it was over I believe my life and and this is the way I'm gonna go out so let's just meet it head on I kind of got that moment right. let's meet it head on and we see what it is of course I forgot I wasn't thinking in my fire I wasn't that big to start with but it was nothing but burnt down to small coals right. and not throwing out any light I mean that was so dark that night I can't get over how dark it was I couldn't see right. I couldn't see six inches in front of me do you, do you think maybe one of the reasons you couldn't see anything is because it was really wide it was really tall, and you were looking straight into black fur? It might have been, but I kind of thought about that, though, and when it stepped off, I still could not see anything. I couldn't see around me. Okay. I couldn't see nothing. I mean, if possible, this is blocking any right. type of light, but, I mean, that was, it's almost like such a dark night. It's almost like it was premeditated. Right. Now that I look back on it, like it knew the moon phases. Right, okay. And, and it knew it was going to be really dark at night or something. I, I don't remember till I could get down toward, you know, if I could have backed out of there right. and went down toward town a little bit. There, there was a little light there and I probably could have seen. But other than that, it was like so dark. Okay, and did did you feel like it was making the all the tree popping, cracking, and I do. the noise? I, I know for sure, for fact. Yeah. I know for a fact. It, it sounded like a bulldozer just walking on two legs. Okay, and, and snapping off everything in its path. And and you you feel like he would time this with the phases of the moon and the sound of uh, something massive. He was doing this on purpose to intimidate you? I, looking back, yeah. At, when, it, when it happened, I was just so, like, it was almost like I just entered the twilight zone and was like, this this can't be happening, you know? This, right. this isn't supposed to be happening. Um, yeah, because these uh, creatures but, are known to be very, very stealthy. They can sneak along right beside people and them not even notice. So when they're making yeah, that much noise, it's just... Sure. It, may, it might have been out there watching me right. for all I know for a while. Right. Okay. Well, that's that's a very scary situation to pop out of your tent in that it kind was, of. Darkness. It was. I'll tell you, it, it was. Uh, yeah. Pretty nerve wracking. It, does it seem? To, did it seem like to you that it could see well at night? I think it could see just fine. Okay. I, I think it could see just fine. I mean, it knew right where it was going. Yeah. It went, and it was almost like it was looking in my trash bag. And I had my trash bag to six foot off the ground, yeah. hanging on this tree. And it was just looking in there like it, was, like it had a hand. And it was coming through my soup cans, knocking them around. Yeah. Okay. And maybe, you know, I don't know, but... I thought, at that point, I thought, well, if I'm going to die here, I'm going to at least see what it is. And I totally forgot about the fire. Mm. I usually don't leave the fire going. I had it all safe, safely set up and everything in a safe area. And I had rocks lining around it and stuff. But mm. I, I just totally thought there was going to be some flame left out there. Mm. And maybe it's a good thing I didn't see it. I might have... Might have just puked or something. I don't know, but <laughs> so what did you do after that? It made me very uneasy. I put it that way, and I do think it would come up there as intimidation. Like um, I know you're here, but you're gonna know I'm here. Right. So what did you do the next day then? So the next day comes along after I had a sleepless night. Needless to say, but. Then I got a few hours of sleep after daylight. And everything was quiet after all that, but uh, I was just still really uh, just just a 
amazed, like, wow, did that happen, you know? So the next day comes along, and I want to tell my friend. So he gets out of work, and, and I go meet up with him in town. I knew where he'd be, so I went up there and got a hold of him. We, I think we went up and got a bite to eat cheap hamburger or something. I was telling him about it. And he just started laughing at me. He's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. He thought I was telling a story. I don't know why, but, and I'm telling him, and we kind of hung out the rest of that day, and it got dark, the night fall. And this was in Different. 
Uh -huh. So he went up by the tracks real quick and grabbed a handful of rocks, of railroad limestone type rocks, and he started whipping rocks at it. And I said, oh my gosh, I said, don't do that. And, and this thing's gaining ground as we're sitting there talking. And I'm telling him, one thing, the thing could have killed me last night. It, it, if it wanted to, it could have just crushed me, picked me up, threw me up on top of a tree. It seemed like it was just that massive. But I told him it didn't. It didn't kill me. And the other reason is if you hit it with one of those, I don't want to see this thing mad. Mm -hmm. So uh, he quit throwing rocks, and we were stepping out of there as it was coming up. We were kind of backing out of there. And it was gaining ground on us real quick. It was getting up to the campsite real quick. And it was just step by step, methodically study, step, step, step with all the cracking and brush. You could hear it. So uh, we both looked at each other and we just turned and ran. We, we bailed out that night. We got out of there as quick as we could. And we were running down the tracks, so left everything there. And uh, we, I looked back a couple times just because I had a feeling something was watching or behind me. But luckily it wasn't nothing. I didn't see anything running at me. So we got out of there. Needless to say, I never went back to the site. I refused to go back to it. He went out there the next day, I guess, and gathered all his gear up real quick, what he could, and the trash, and all, you know, real quick, and brought it back. And uh, we hadn't been out there since. I haven't gone out there to fish or anything. Right. So when, when you was hearing these limbs and stuff snapping, you... Yeah, I like the little, uh, the the example you gave a minute ago. It's like you would hear them, the limbs flexing, like... You, hear, you know how they splinter? If you had a 2x8, a 2x4, a yeah. 6x4, um, or something like that. And, I mean, it would just splinter and crack and echo, like... Like, yeah. yeah, you know, but it echo, <laughs> and, it was, and it wasn't little twigs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's amazing. Uh, just, just to try to get the sense of what you're, what you're saying, you did a really good job, uh, you know, describing it. This, this pounding steps, and the, and the steps are yeah, cr crushing. Was... You can tell when something's real heavy by the sound of it crushing something, you know, and then these big, huge limbs flexing and popping and cracking and pow, you know, echoing through. I never through. forget it, and I know what I experience. And, and you, um, you, I don't care what anybody else says, like maybe some, till it happens to them or something, but you know, it's something different. Yeah, and, and, and I think what the interesting thing is when you were trying to describe it to me the first time, you were talking about these steps but you were trying the best you knew how to do at the time is saying you know it was taking one step two steps and then it was so much closer and you your mind knew that a, a normal walk when some you hear footsteps it isn't that much closer that quick so your mind is uh not computing it's not matching up with the normal things that the brain would put together in a normal okay. situation this is way heavier the steps are uh, gaining on you way too fast for the amount of steps so the subconscious mind actually does um, put a lot of things together that we're not aware of and the abnormalness of this your friend knew really quick didn't he yeah he knew he knew right away <laughs> um, as soon as he started hearing it and to put this in perspective, probably for me to walk that distance through that sick stuff, it probably would have taken me at least 10 minutes where it took this thing maybe 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, that, I mean, that, that's kind of funny where he's like, he, he knew really fast that, uh, that, hey, there's something wrong here in the heaviness and what have you. But it, the thing standing by your tent, going through the bag, and then you jumping out, and it lets out a, 
and and you and it's up in the air way too high and oh my gosh it, your brain just put all puts all this together to form a picture from he, just the hearing alone and it's it's yeah. amazing that the you, we have a subconscious uh, processing that our mind puts together things we hear that we're not even aware of and you knew this thing was tall it was heavy and it had a long step on it, and uh, <laughs> and the sound. I knew things. it was just. Uh, I knew. I hadn't. I knew it was different. I knew it probably shouldn't be there. I knew, like it was. It wasn't the norm. It was not anything normal by any means. Right. And, uh, you know, I've never forgotten about it because, for one, I'm, I'm just surprised I lived through it. Yeah, I guess, you know, if it really was aggressive or wanted to, it could have just easily gotten rid of me. I don't know if anybody had ever found me. I don't know. But that was, you know, there's water. Um, I'm just, I think, looking back in hindsight, it was just, kind of trying to tell me, look, I'm out here, <laughs> so, I'm out here, so whatever, whatever you got, I'm privy to, uh, or I'm out here, maybe you should leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I really liked how you said earlier, too, if I'm going to go, I'm going to go with my boots on. <laughs> yeah, I heard what the heck, because I, I really thought it was my last few minutes alive I really did yeah now when you were younger you had a dog that um um that that uh you all had uh, outside um yeah that was a strange thing too and you had found you'd had found big footprints around there in that area um also that you know you found a little later but can you tell Over us a little bit winter, about that yeah in the snow there was on the back side of our garage coming up around the back side up to where the dog was chained to and, and uh, these were big humanoid footprints and you thought someone was uh, and my dad kind of said you know he thought somebody was playing a joke or somebody was creeping around right. and uh, I thought somebody was trying to pull something I had no idea I woke up one morning I, he was he was mad about it and just kind of cussing it off out there. Right. Um, next, you know, that was in, a, in the snow. And then the dog, of course, is chained up out there. And I used to play with the dog all the time. Uh, and I, and I, over, over probably a matter of a couple, three months, the dog kind of got more agitated and a little meaner. And started seeming kind of weird so I did I, I got to the point where I wasn't sure whether to play with him or not right. but but there was a time after that that snow then spring came and all of us as a family went out we went up to another town north of there which was Goshen for the basically the whole day and uh when we got back, right away I noticed the dog because I was a kid. I always kept an eye on the dog. I, and I noticed the dog went around. And I'm kind of freaking out. Well, I, well where, where'd the dog go? So I go out behind the house. But the, the garage and the house had a space between it, about 20 foot. So I went behind the house. And I noticed... Uh, I'm looking out of the backyard as my folks were unlocking the door and the main, the main door we used was right there across from the garage so I'm looking out back I don't see him then I hear a bark and I hear a bark whoop, whoop, whoop. And I was coming from below out back there and I looked down and we, the house actually had like a two foot foundation we had about three windows it had, a, it had a basement under it so it had the windows and the uh, foundation about and sure enough I looked in there and the dogs 
in the basement. Mm -hmm. So when we got inside and went down there to get the dog out, he was standing there shaking. I mean, physically shaking, like, and just looking like he was just scared out of his mind. Okay, well, was the dog on a chain outside? Yeah, he was still on the chain. So the chain, was it broken, or what What was the deal with the chain? The chain was snapped right off at where it anchored to the garage. My goodness. Now, see, the one of the reason that that kind of stands out to me is because I have another uh, story from a guy in Oklahoma who had gotten this dog, and he really loved this dog. It was a huge, I forget what breed, but it's one of those real, real big type dogs. And he got it for guarding the house because at nighttime, um, they would have rocks and things like that thrown at the house, and they would have... Um, um, something like huge walking around the house and they they at the time didn't know nothing about Bigfoot or anything like that so they thought maybe they had a prowler that was messing with them throwing rocks and things like that and later on they figured out what it was because um, they had you know some encounters and what have you but this big dog he lets this big dog out and he thought it was going to go around the house and, and go after this uh, in, intruder and um right. uh, so he, he heard it going around the house barking and going off and all of a sudden he heard a yelp and uh, glass breaking. So he runs back down the hallway trying to get to the area he thought it might have happened and he looked yeah. in, the, in the room and the glass was all inside the house like it was busted from the outside in all out That's in the room. He, he, he goes over there to the windows looking around and um that big, huge dog was under the bed. Now, this dog was so mean that the lady who owned it gave it to them and said, this will make you a good guard dog. He said, after that incident of this uh, Bigfoot throwing this dog through the window, um, that this dog wouldn't even go outside. It was so timid. It walked around with his tail tucked under all the time. And was that kind of how the, your dog acted after that? Yeah, it was pretty uh Different, pretty messed up. It was kind of a um, scared. I was scared. Yeah, it was just scared, really scared. A PTSD for a dog, I guess, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's if you had to describe it. Yeah. Well, that's really interesting, man, and I I really appreciate you, Jim, um, coming on and telling your stories, and um, I may kind of tell a little bit of your stories in some other videos or. Something like that. Some of the other little details, um, but they weren't. They were just kind of. They were just build up to um, you kind of realizing about this subject. So, you got anything else you want to say? Something. Pardon? Oh, I'm losing you. Uh, is there anything else you want to say? Uh, you brought up something. Um, you said something earlier that reminded me of. Uh, Here's the thing, when this happened to me out of the tent, you know, I'm growing up, I didn't think much about it, I never thought much about it till the tent. Now, the tent incident, I was about 30 years old, and I know what I experienced, mm -hmm. but, you know, I I had reported that at a, at a Bigfoot site, but I saw it on the news. I didn't even know there was a site or area or something anything like that. I didn't know there was anything like that, but I saw it on the news, so I contacted this guy and reported it. And it's funny you said about, like, like the uh, people didn't claim there's no things like that up there, like, and I know who you're talking about. I, I don't know if I should drop any names, but they have a TV show. Right, yeah. And they told the guy I contacted that, uh, oh, there's nothing up there. It's a waste of our time. Right. But yeah. I know for a fact right. that there's stuff up there. Yeah. They're in every state but Hawaii. And um, it's, it's quite amazing at the stories I get and from the areas. It's just unbelievable that these things are everywhere. And, you know, I interviewed a guy here not too long ago, Mark Zagsby. He goes out bigfooting and catches these things on camera 
within feet from the golf course. It's unbelievable. There's wow. people walking around, and he's getting Bigfoot on video that close to people. People have no idea. These things are on the edges of the woods. They're sometimes right. deep in the woods, but they're they're in small areas of woods. It's not even that big. And, and yeah, the you know, place I was camping wasn't that big, wood wooded wise. It yeah. wasn't like a big patch of woods. Yeah, they blend so good in the woods that they can be standing basically right beside a tree, and they stand so perfectly still that you walk right by them. They look like a tree. They sometimes yeah, just sit and I think that, You know, for all I know, it could have been watching me out there for who knows how long. Right. But, yeah. um, it definitely wanted me to know it was there, <laughs> looking back on it. Right. Yeah. They, they'd use uh, intimidation because they're able to sneak around right beside you. And they have been caught on tape going paralleling people and them not even know it. And they accidentally catch it on tape and the, the things in the bush right next to them creeping along, not making a sound. So, so when they're making these sounds, they're doing it on purpose. You know, I have nothing against it. I think they should be respected. I think people should know they're out there. Just, just know that there are things out there you might not be able to control it. Uh, just respect nature, respect the woods. Keep your eyes open, because there could be anything from a cotton mouth to whatever. You know, you run into that every time you go out to the woods or a wild area. Right. Mm -hmm. But just, I think they should be respected, and uh, you don't want to go trashing on them like somebody. Who, or, you wouldn't want somebody to come into your neighborhood and trash on you. Right. Yeah. But with that being said, um, it has the opportunity just to, yeah. you know, if it wanted to take me out, which I thought it was going to, I thought. Right. Yeah. Well, you're you're welcome on that, and uh, and I I appreciate when uh, people share their stories uh, because after a while we begin to c kind of collect a big picture and and uh, and it's quite a, it's quite amazing really and um, we I've I've learned a lot since I started collecting these stories and it's because of people like you that are willing to come forward and share so uh, I really want to say thank you to you. And tell your wife You're thank welcome. you and and um, uh, for you all's time this afternoon and uh, and and uh, anything else that you uh, come up with to hear a story or something. If you want to uh, like holler at me, you you're more than welcome. And and uh, uh, we'll do, uh, Brenton. Um, I'm, I I watched your channel a few times, so that's why I contacted you. I know you do a good job with this and. Uh, you keep it on the on the uh, common sense approach, backed up by scripture. Yeah, so, yeah. The Bible part. Good uh, job on I that. love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. I'm. I really. Uh, I like it when uh, people appreciate the uh, the scripture aspect because there there are a lot of things like this in the in the scriptures, and uh, so I cover these mysteries with the biblical worldview and. Some people like it, some don't. But even the people that don't, sometimes they're respectful about it, and and uh, so yeah. so thank you to you and your wife, and um, you've got my uh, con you've got my contact information. Uh, holler at me anytime, okay? Yeah, I will. Right. You can call me anytime, okay? Yes, sir. I sure will. God bless, and we'll talk to you later. Okay. God bless you. All right. Bye bye. Bye. All right, YouTube land. Uh, hope you liked that. Uh, very interesting stuff, in my opinion. Uh, just so much right there to glean from that. The the footsteps and the the way that the mind actually 
um, is able to interpret what you're hearing even without the seeing part um, I think that, that in a way we have a subconscious processing going on all the time and if something takes three steps and it moves 40 feet or whatever that it was there um, we, we know something's up here something's different the sound of things popping and cracking uh, you can kind of give a get a, a little bit of a, a idea of a weight of something and uh, I thought that was just a fascinating story and uh, I hope you all liked it if anyone has a story out there that they want to share um, you can contact me at brentonson at gmail.com thank you for watching like share subscribe and comment God bless, and I'll see you on the next video.